The battle for control of the smart home is well and truly on, with communication service providers well placed to play a key role. One way the CSPs can build strong ties with their customers is being able to easily add extra smart home functionality quickly and easily using application containers in a way that improves customer satisfaction. And to find out more about how they can do that, I'm talking today with Laszlo Gielog, Head of Digital Home Marketing at Nokia, and Gino Dion, Director of Innovation Solutions at Nokia. So Laszlo, let's start with you. Uh, why is this new technology important for CSPs? Well, a very good question and a very to the point. I mean, today all service providers are already bringing broadband to the home. Some of them are looking at how to extend that broadband throughout the home, and then some still are looking at bringing a managed Wi-Fi service to the market. But that's the foundation, the connectivity foundation. Now with application containers, they have an opportunity to monetize new applications and to be more competitive against the over-the-top players. Think, for example, about delivering a secure connectivity service, things like cybersecurity, rental control. Then on top of that uh, secure connectivity, they can bring a premium connectivity. Think of low latency for gaming. Uh, think also of all the whole working from home environment with SD1 or VPN capabilities. And then still on top of that, that can bring smart home services. The whole idea of application containers is to introduce these services as flexibly as possible. Service providers should really have the opportunity to install and uninstall these applications. And we are talking here about the residential gateways just as you have the flexibility to install and uninstall applications on your smartphone. That is what we want to bring. And that is why it is so important for the service providers. With this flexibility, they will be able to monetize with these new services. OK, so how exactly does this technology work? The first thing you have to do is to enable the right environment for these applications to run on broadband devices, whether it is an ONT or a fixed wireless access gateway or a device that extends the Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. But the right environment is by, first of all, completely separating and isolating the applications from the underlying operating system or firmware. By doing that, you build in a level of security. Imagine that you have a rogue application you want to avoid, of course, that a rogue application impacts other applications or worse still, that this rogue application were to impact the underlying operating system. So that separation or isolation is really very important. And we actually introduce a kind of an abstraction layer to do that. So that abstraction layer will isolate the applications from the operating system. It will also make sure that the applications have their right runtime environment, allocating sufficient memory, allocating sufficient CPU power as well. And as such, by isolating the two, you also create an independence between the two lifecycle management systems. So while for uh, the operating system or firmware, you typically have cycles of, let's say, three months before you have an update of the firmware, you want to work independently from that three month cycle and introduce applications whenever the service provider wants to. That also allows a much, much faster time to market. So that's basically the concept to bring these applications on the broadband devices. We are working with application containers that are installed on the, the devices and through the abstraction layer, they will get the right runtime environment, including security as well. So how is this actually implemented? Well, for the implementation, you need four components. First of all, you need those broadband devices that I mentioned before that support application containers. The second, of course, is to have applications. Well, those could come from third-party developers or service providers may decide to develop their own applications. The third thing you need is somewhere to store these applications. Call it an app store, call it an app server. Well, in essence, it's nothing more than a simple FTP server or an HTTPS server, which service providers already have anyway. And then the last component is the ability to manage the lifecycle of these applications. 
You need to be able to install and uninstall applications. You need the ability to update the applications, to monitor their status and so on. Well, that is done through TR-069, which is again a protocol very familiar to most, if not all, service providers. And we use the combination of TR-069 together with TR-157 as the data model to allow that full lifecycle management. So typically an ACS would be required, an automatic configuration server, to handle these TR-069 commands. But in essence, all of these four components should be quite familiar for most service providers. So it's a little step upwards to really introduce these application containers. Okay, excellent. Now, of course, the applications have to be developed. So uh, Gino, can you tell us about your current partners, please? Absolutely. So it's been really an exciting launch for Nokia. Um, we announced several partners right from the get-go. Uh, partners such as NTOP from the NTOP.org open source organization that provides uh, DPI services in Engine and IPFix Agent. We have partners in the gaming space, such as GameBench, in the application prioritization space, such as Domos, security and parental control with F-Secure, and the list goes on and on. It's actually, uh, in total, there's over 30 something plus application providers that we are working with to date, not counting the ones that are created by the service providers themselves. As Laszlo said, those are very exciting. So the, the success of the application containers does reside on having a very rich and broad ecosystem that can take advantage of the platforms to enable this monetization. Okay, excellent. And uh, Gino, I understand that you can now talk us through a demonstration. Okay, let's go ahead and see it. Absolutely. As Laszlo explained so well, Nokia spent a lot of time and effort in really understanding the challenges that had to be addressed to be able to mature this technology to a point where it could be used on residential broadband devices. And there were really four major pillars. The first one is SOC architecture variations. A lot of these residential gateways, either it be ONTs or fixed wireless access, may have different SOC from different vendors, different architecture, ARMS, MIPS, or even x86, different operating systems. So that was one of the big challenges. How do you create and develop a software framework that allows for, to be adapted for all of these different variations? That was the first pillar. The second one is real-time data collection. Um, Laszlo explained TR69 is an excellent, very mature protocols when it comes to device configuration, device management, and things of that nature. But it's not really suited, or was, wasn't really meant, I should say, for real-time data collection on a per-service, per-application, and so forth. So that was an, also another challenge we wanted to address, is making sure that these applications that get deployed would not be limited by some of the protocols that have been used in the past. The third one, uh, which I got really excited about, is service creation velocity. How quickly can a service provider manage and deploy containerized applications? We heard earlier that one of the main issues is when every tie, everything is tied to the firmware, that can involve very long release cycles or very limited number of release cycles. When you have the ability to disaggregate the applications from the firmware, those limitations go away. You're really in you're at the control of your own domain into when and how you want to deploy those apps. And then finally, the lifecycle management. Okay, so we've been able to disaggregate the applications from the residential gateway firmware. What now? Well, it's important to have a platform that allows you to apply not just the technical aspects, but also the OSS BSS rules. Do I want to deploy an app? Uh, on one CP, all CPs, uh, one type, all types, one region, all regions. Can I manage the installation, start, stop, uninstall, updates, and monitor? We wanted to make sure that we had a very mature and rich lifecycle management capability as part of our framework. The second thing that we decided to really um, explain is how did we do this? Well, adopting industry standards and nothing that what we did was proprietary in nature. So we adopt the broadband forum standards such as software module management 
And they you know, very rightly describe any software entity that will be installed on device is a software module with the exception of the firmware. So that makes a lot of sense. So this allows us to create that abstraction layer that Laszlo mentioned earlier, where with that abstraction layer, we address a lot of the challenges that we saw in the previous slide, but also enables us to isolate those applications while still allowing them to take advantage of the kernel, the resources, the network facilities, and everything else. So once we have all that, what we've done at the launch of our containerized application is we already have a very rich and broad ecosystem. I mentioned we've been working with, you know, excess of 30 something different uh, application providers in a wide variety of contexts from managed Wi-Fi, security and parental controls, you know, latency gaming packages, remote worker enhancements, service assurance, and the list goes on and on. And you see a couple of the lists there. So what we've done really to demonstrate the capabilities of what a system like this really offers is we wanted to recreate the experience of a smartphone. Everybody's used today to having a, an iPhone or an Android phone. You go to your app store, you select an app, you know, 15, 20 seconds later, the app is installed and you get advantage of it. Well, the technology that we've developed and integrated into our devices allows the service provider that exact same flexibility. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll start seeing app stores pop up tomorrow uh, from your service provider that allows you to pick and choose. No, no, that will be an evolution. It will come in time. But containerization technology is used today. We have customers, service providers around the world using this technology to deploy a lot of these services. But in the context of the app store, how about we show you a demonstration of how real and how quickly that is. So we have a demonstration app store here. This is actually running on a live production network. It's not just in the lab. So when I logged in, you know, it sees uh, my device and knows I'm Gino. And it sees, oh, currently I already have one application installed. It's an app that Nokia has developed uh, that allows you to detect if you need mesh and extenders. And I see a list of new apps in the store and I see a list of all the other apps that are available. So what if I want to install a speed test application? Well, the same ease that you do on your smartphone, I'm just going to go ahead and say install. So what's happening here is our app store is talking to that ACS server that Lazlo was talking about. The ACS server is asking the CP to download the app from its store, install the app, and making sure that it's all up and running properly. And this happens in real time. Very quickly, just as I was talking to you guys, I can now see that my application is installed. So I can actually connect to it. So if I want to connect to my speed test app, I'm going to click launch. Let's say I wanted to do a new class speed test. And I'm going to pick the server that's close to me. I'm in Eastern Canada, so with Tabel Light in St. John, New Brunswick. And I'm actually going to click go, and I can actually perform my speed test now. And I'm lucky that I'm sitting on a very good connection, a, a uh, one gigabit, uh, gigabit symmetrical connection with excellent latency, so one millisecond. But you can see that this application, I was able to install it as I was talking to you. In the past, this was, is something that would have taken months, if not quarters, to be able to achieve. Now, I'm done with the app. If I want to go ahead and uninstall it, same process in reverse. I can go ahead and say uninstall. And now uh, the app store is talking to the ACS. The ACS is uh, asking the CP to stop, uninstall the application, and uh, reallocate the resources. And in real time, we're now back to our... Uh, or starting point where the app is, is uninstalled. So this is really the flexibility and the power of what our framework was and what we, we wanted to be able to demonstrate the technology of what is actually capable today on these next generation CPEs. Thank you. So back to you, Ray. Okay, great to see the solution in action there. Laszlo, Gino, thanks very much for joining us today and talking us through this new product. Thank you. And thank you very much, Ray, for this opportunity. Thank you, Ray. The pleasure is all ours.